I think this is a super funny film. It's not just a sci-fi flick, but I think it's a great comedy as well. Was there something about Melanie or about just the premise of Alien Country that made you want to be a part of this? Oh my gosh, I couldn't agree more. You know, one of my favorite feelings as a filmmaker is getting to sit in a packed theater audience and and hearing people pretty much laugh throughout the entire film and now even getting a lot of different awards at different film festivals for best comedy. Uh, even when we didn't really set out to make a comedy necessarily, it just kind of, I guess, happened, um, which is a cool thing. Um, well, I guess, man, when I first read the script, you know, I get sent scripts all the time and a lot of times it's really hard to even make it through. Um, it's really hard to write a really good script. <laughs> um, and sometimes they're really few and far between. And this one, I just, I just loved it. I was just remember laughing the whole time and just pretty much knowing like, I want to be a part of this film. And um, they had sent it to me with Melanie in mind. And so, but I did read her very differently. So initially in the script, Melanie is read she was initially supposed to be a very hippie kind of soft character. And I just had this gut instinct to make her very strong and very feisty <laughs> and very different than what she was originally wrote to be. Um, and luckily they really liked it. And we've actually now got a lot of compliments that both all the female characters are very strong characters, but also still very feminine, which a lot of people um, really, really um, are grateful for that portrayal of strong feminine characters. Well, I think Melanie just adds to the great uh, lightness <laughs> to the situation. I mean, everyone doesn't seem to believe there's aliens, you know, what the time they're stealing people, but um, it's so funny and so great. Have you always had a knack for comedy or have you been working at it lately? Oh, you know, it's interesting. I mean, my whole life I've loved comedy and luckily in my career, I've got to do all different kinds of, you know, a lot of action, a lot of drama. Um, I mean, they're comedy interwoven into films, but probably nothing as just straight funny as this, um, other than smaller roles I did on like Two and a Half Men and How I Met Your Mother and things like that. Um, but I mean, <laughs> in all honesty, I feel like my comedy improv game has 10 x ever since I started dating my now husband, uh, because he loves improv and comedy. And even though he wasn't originally an actor when we first started dating, uh, we loved to create social media content together and film comedy sketches. And more than anything, he was so good at deadpan comedy improv because he just grew up doing it with his cousins all the time. And so we started, <laughs> one of our morning routines is called morning shenanigans. And the rule of the game is you have to do everything you possibly can to make the other person laugh while keeping a completely straight face. So just saying the most ridiculous things, doing the most ridiculous things, and just completely straight faced. Um, totally improv, uh, totally random. And initially I wasn't that good at it because I would just break all the time. I would just laugh. Um, and he was just so good at it. But now, cut two years later, I am really good at it. And a lot of times we have to like just end our game because nobody's breaking after a long time. I'm curious about your co-stars in this, uh, not just the aliens, uh -huh. but mm -hmm. were you looking forward to sharing scenes with someone in particular? I mean, Renny is pretty darn good in this. She really is. I mean, honestly, I feel like the entire cast did such an incredible job, which oh, just makes my heart so happy, both as an actress to get to work with them and also a producer on this film. I just like kind of sit back in awe because I feel like every character is just such a character and every single person really brought so much of themselves and a very clear vision to each character that just made it so much better. Um, you know, I guess just equally, I think everybody in the film, I was just really excited to get to work with. And, and more than anything, I'm very excited about the friendship family that we've created from this movie. Um, I feel really blessed in my career that a lot of the films I've worked on, I've just met them best friends from it and we just literally laughed the entire time filming or at least I did I laughed the entire time filming with all the characters <laughs> and had so much fun doing it <laughs> I have to ask about the aliens though for sure were there puppeteers or is that all green screen it's so incredible yes. like realistic to me like I could never fathom if they weren't real yeah, it is wild. I am so proud of my dear friend and our director, Boston, who 
literally, you know, our special effects team went bankrupt during the process of filming this movie. And they were a really incredible team. They worked on films like Avatar and they were incredible. But because of the pandemic and a lot of different things, a lot of companies obviously went under. So that happened and then we didn't have the money to go hire another team. So basically Boston had to like lock himself in a room for years and just teach himself how to do special effects and do over 250 special effects shots by himself. And I, I've been a part of other kind of lower budget sci-fi films and nothing has come close to what this looks like with the special effects um, and the aliens. And, and that's a huge testament to him not giving up, not settling, putting in the time and the effort and the energy and the blood, sweat, and tears, nervous breakdowns that <laughs> it takes to make a really great film at this, at this level, with this budget. And um, the aliens were kind of half and half special effects and also practical. So when we were shooting, even in the derby scenes, um, and I'm like shooting with my shotgun and, uh, you know, at aliens. So we had some practical ones that were like on the car, but most of it was we were imagining. Um, and then the tight in shots, when you see me like lassoing the alien or, you know, shooting the alien through the shotgun through the window, um, that was imaginary in a green screen, uh, at least for our character. So, and that was really fun to shoot because it felt like we were just being five years old pretending, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was going to ask what were your favorite sheen scenes to shoot or ones that you're most proud of the work you put into, but those are pretty epic. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to say getting to lasso an alien um, uh, like the side of the car was a pretty epic shot um, that I just had so much fun doing and shooting. Um, I would say, I mean, I maybe not an entire scene, but something that I am really proud of is um, my husband in the film, his name is Corbin Allred. We worked really hard um, throughout the film and before the film to really work hard to create one, a lot more to our characters than was maybe written on the page. And then also especially a portrayal of what a healthy long-term marriage could look like where there's a lot of uh, just making fun of each other, but also loving each other and also being kind of, you know, it's just the jabs and the, and the things that uh, a couple that had been married for, you know, 15 years with a little kid, would do throughout the film rather than I think a lot of times, you know, we just don't always get that. It takes a lot of work as an actor to create those relationships and those moments that aren't written in the script, um, but that you guys are creating the backstory for and throughout the film staying consistent with that and finding those fun moments. Um, a lot of little fun moments that we created in the film that I think make a huge difference. I have to ask about working with Boston as well, because the direction in this and the cinematography, it's all so epic for Alien Country. I could not agree more. Um, I think Boston is one of the uh, most talented up and coming directors um, along, you know, with this partner, Rennie, and just our, our team now. That's why I, um, you know, want to make so many more movies together. I just, like I said, I've done a lot of different films at different levels. Um, and I worked with several directors and there's just a Boston just has such uh, an amazing way to work with actors. Also a very clear vision in his head and brings so much fun to the set um, in both his vision and being very clear in it, but also this ability to play around. You know, there's always this freedom on set to be like, okay, improv. Okay. What do you want to do here? And, and, and this collaborative experience between that Boston created with not just him and you, but also with everybody on set. Uh, but also, oh my gosh, I think where they think film sets are very stressful, like very stressful. One of the nights we were shooting at nighttime all through the night, we are slapstick happy at this point. We really need to finish the day, but one of the derby cars is not starting. In my mind, I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know that we don't have time. If you go over time in a film, like you just, it's so much more money. We don't have it. Like just all this stuff. And I'm like, are we, we have to get this shot in my head. And so I'm freaking out. And I just see, I think that Boston would freak out and he's just like, nope, it's going to work. It's going to shrimp. Somehow it'll, it'll work out. And he just was able to keep his cool the whole time, which I think is almost as a director, I feel like the best directors are able to no matter what is going on. And usually every single day they have about a million problems they have to solve. They never let that show to the people on set. It's just like, all right, we're here as a team. We're in it. Let's go. Um, and they're able to manage stress in a really incredible way. 
I know we touched on it a little bit. We talked about the action and the comedy. What do you think it is about Alien Country that's just going to make it this fast fan favorite sci-fi mm -hmm. comedy? My gosh, I am so grateful that you said that because I also really agree that it has that potential. And we are getting all those kinds of reviews from people all over the world just saying how much they love this movie and how much fun they had watching it and how it was the escape that they needed. And just that like that that those fun jump scares and the laughter throughout the film that just brought them joy in a kind of challenging time in our world. And I I really think it's it's the love that was put into it. As cheesy as it sounds, there was so much love that was put into this movie. Every single person on set was just, they weren't there because they were making a bunch of money because we nobody made a bunch of money on this movie yet, at least. Um, it was like an investment of, I love this story. I love the people involved. We want to make a movie that just feels fun and takes people on this wild, crazy adventure. And uh, in a type of film that I feel like was super popular back in the 80s, uh, 90s, that were just these fun, family-friendly, action, comedy, adventure, sci-fi, like Back to the Future is a great example. And I feel like we're missing some of those. We're, we don't have a lot of those anymore. So wanting to create more of them together and just, just bring joy to the world. <laughs> Sounds so cheesy, but honestly, like, I just think we need it. I think there's enough stress and worry and doubt and fear out there. And uh, we just... A more love and joy and laughter and more we can get the better. What's next for you? What are the other projects you've been busy working on lately? Yeah, I have some really exciting projects coming up. Um, I'm very excited about another film that I star in called Legend of the White Dragon. I play Iris Maine, who's the main female superhero action hero character in that film. And I got to play alongside some really incredible legends, some of my childhood childhood you know, heroes, um, a dear friend of mine named Jason David Frank, who plays the main character in that. And sadly, he's no longer with us. So this film is a huge tribute to him. It'll be his last film and um, a bunch of other incredible cast members that I love dearly. And again, this has been similar to Alien Country, about four years in the making and a ton, a ton, a ton of love into this project and has an amazing message behind it that I think our world really needs. And that is that even superheroes need help too. And man, you know, and I deeply resonate with that because as someone who's always been a very like high achieving go-getter type person, I've look for a long time battled with the story that like you know asking for help is a weakness or that if I'm I could just have it all together all the time and if I don't then something I'm not good enough and so and I think that's a very false story that that can cause a lot of of issues and depression and isolation and I worked hard to completely rewrite that story and I no longer believe that and I don't live, <clears throat> I believe that asking for help is the bravest, strongest thing you can do. And that, yeah, even superheroes need help too. So I have that film coming out early, probably early next year. And then also another really cool animated film that I am starring in and also um, produce. And that uh, has a lot of really incredible legends in it as well.